So at the very beginning we're going to be looking at sequences and we're going to be looking at their limits. Sequences are any kind of expression that could be written out in kind of a list. So for example 2n plus 5 all over 3n. Now we write it like this with some really ugly ugly curly brackets here saying that this is a set of numbers. I could write them out if I wanted to, but right now this is the rule for finding any of them. So for like n equals 1, if I plug it in I would get 2 plus 5, so I get 7 all over 3, and that's my first term. Normally we would write it as a sub 1, so that guy right there is a sub 1, and then I keep going. Well, what if I plug 2 in? I would get 9 all over 6, which is the same as 3 halves, and this guy will be a2. And I could go on and on. But the power of this right here, this is called the general term, because if I wanted to find the hundredth term, I can just jump right to it. I plug 100 in, I get 205 on top, all over 300, and that could be reduced, but the point is that I know automatically the hundredth term. Now, as you're looking at this, the other question we could ask is, where is the sequence going? So the easiest way to do this is probably to look at the decimal expansion of all these numbers, meaning plug in 7 thirds, and I get 2.3 repeating. I plug 3 halves in, I would get 1.5. Now they're getting smaller, and if I keep going, if I go down to the hundredth term, 205 divided by 300, is 0.683 repeating. Now if I just keep going and going and going, eventually I'm going to get two-thirds as my limit. It's going to get as close as possible to 0.6 repeating, and I'll never get past it. Now the reason here, if you remember from rational expressions, or if you've ever done this before, when you put larger and larger n in, that plus 5 on the side does not matter as much, because you're going to be having larger and larger multiplications here. So you'll have 2 times a huge number all over 3 times a huge number, and it's almost like this guy doesn't exist when the numbers are so large, so we should expect 2 thirds. Alright, so there are special sequences that have special names. The first one is called arithmetic. It's not arithmetic sequence, it's arithmetic for some reason. Now here's an example of an arithmetic. If I start writing this out, say we have n equals 1, I would get 2 plus 1 is 3. So that's a1. If I plug n equals 2 in, I get 4 plus 1 is 5. So that's a2. And if I plug n equals 3, I get 7. That's a3. Dot, dot, dot. It goes on and on. It's called arithmetic or arithmetic sequences because if you look at the change, we are adding 2 every single time, which should make sense since our slope here, if you think about it like a line, is 2. But the point is that this thing here is called a common difference. It is a difference that is common. It's the same difference every single time. That, that terminology is going to be very important. Another thing that we should come away from here, not only could I find any number of terms in the sequence, these guys are all terms, I can start talking about what is the limit as n goes to infinity of 2n plus 1. It's just asking where it's going. And of course, if I start putting larger and larger numbers in for n, I'm going to get larger and larger numbers, and it, there is no ceiling. There's no limit to how large those numbers can be. So we would say it's infinity or it diverges. Alright, the other kind of sequence you'll see is geometric. People are always a fan of saying like things grow exponentially, but if you watch any old TV shows like Star Trek, they always talk about geometric growth. And geometric growth is what we mean by exponential now. We're multiplying every single time. So an example of a geometric sequence would be this. Alright, if I do n equals 1, I plug 1 in, I get 3 to the 0, which is 1. 2 times 1 is 2. That's my a1. Alright, 
When I plug 2 in, I'm going to have 2 times 3 to the first, which will be 6. And then if I plug 3 in, it's going to be 2 times 3 twice, 2 times 3 squared, which is 9 times 2 is 18. On and on. If I wanted to do n equals to the 20th, it's appropriate to write it like 2 times 3 to the 19th, because this is going to be such a large number, it's not worth us writing out like that. But this is still the 20th term. All right, now in this example, they're not going up by the same difference. They're going up by the same multiplication. So I'm multiplying by 3 every single step. And this is called the common ratio. Now, since I'm multiplying by 3 every time, if I divide backwards, I should be getting the same number. So, like 6 divided by 2 is 3. 18 divided by 6 is 3. And so, if I'm ever in doubt about what the common ratio is, I can always divide backwards. And again, they're probably going to ask you, like, what is the limit as this goes on and on forever? Well, if you're looking at the sequence, if we multiply by 3 every time, this is going to be another divergent sequence. It's not going to converge to anything. So let's talk about sequences that might converge. I would like you to pause the video and try to find the limits of these sequences. So here we go. 2n plus 1 all over n. This guy is a geometric sequence. And I'll let you try to figure out what kind of sequence is that last one. All right, so if you write this out, if you write a couple of these terms out, um, you plug 1 in, you're going to get 3 over 1. If you plug 2 in, you're going to get 5 over 2, which is like 2.5. If you plug 3 in, you're going to get 7 over 3. And then you would want to put in a calculator to see probably where the decimals are going here. It's 2.33333, repeating. Now, if you keep doing this, you're going to find that, actually, it's getting closer and closer to 2. So the limit as 2n plus 1 over n, as n goes to infinity, is going to be 2. Now, the reason I'm confident about this, too, is that if you look at the lead terms of a fraction like this, a rational expression, um, it's going to be 2 if you were to divide that out. All right, so 2 is our answer there. Here, let's write out a couple. If I put 1 in there, I'm going to get 64 times 1, because it'll be to the 0 power. If I put in 2, I'm going to have 64 times 1, 1 half, which will be 32. And if I put another 1 in, if I put 3 in, I get 64 times a half twice, so a half, a half, that was going to be 16, dot, dot, dot. Now, if you take, keep taking a number, no matter what it is, and dividing by 2 every time, with a common ratio of 1 half, basically, this is eventually going to go and approach 0. So we would write the limit as n goes to infinity of the expression is approaching 0. Okay, last one here. If I plug 0 in, I get 1. If I plug 1 in, I get negative 1. If I plug 2 in, I get negative 1 squared, which is 1. And then I get negative 1 for the next one. So we see, no matter how high I go with my n's, we're going to just keep alternating here. And now, as far as my book is concerned, if a sequence doesn't if it doesn't approach one single number, then it is divergent. This is divergent because although it doesn't go off to infinity, it never lands on one number. So there are two types of divergent. There's ones where you go to infinity or negative infinity. There's no limit to how high or low you can go. And then there are kind of weird ones where, even though this is a geometric sequence, the common ratio is negative 1 every single time. Um, it is never going to land on one number.